Hello friends and welcome to Ariel's Twilight Years, how to be a really, really, really old model. And this week I'm in Fuerteventura and I have found a new way to be a really, really, really old model and it is a delight. I've got quite a little history with this island. I was first brought here as a very new model by a photographer who brought me here for the week. And then I came back here with another photographer, I came back with a group of photographers, I came back with Howell, who is my husband and also a photographer, and finally I've come back on my own. Now, this is a very strange thing because if I had told 25 year old me, who came here with a photographer for the week, that one day I would be able to travel basically wherever I want without a photographer to take me there, and I would be able to make it pay for itself, I think it would have completely bamboozled me. So I want to talk about how I did it and how if you are a model who hasn't done anything like this but would like to, how you might want to go about doing it. So basically I booked myself on a package holiday. So I've been at an all-inclusive resort. It's a holiday resort on the beach in Fuerteventura and the reason I chose Fuerteventura is because all the beaches seem to be clothes optional. So there's a lot of naturists, a lot of British and German naturists specifically. So I thought I would have a good chance of being able to shoot pictures of myself nude or in lingerie on the beach without anyone being offended. And indeed, that has been exactly the case. I haven't even been very hassled by anyone. You know, a few people have come over and offered to help, <laughs> and a few people have made kind of slightly lecherous comments, but I've not felt in danger at any point, and I've been on my own the entire week photographing myself on the beach. So I wondered when I booked this if I could make it work financially, because the entire trip cost me let me look it up, £1,175 altogether. So let me give you a quick breakdown of that. It was £742 for the package, the hotel and the flight, then £60 for food and drink at the airport slash on the flight, £50 for lunches that I ate away from the resort, um, £20 for fuel to get to the airport, um, £93 parking, £90 for a hotel at the airport because I had an early flight, £67 on new clothes for the trip, £30 on new tech, I needed some remote triggers and another tripod for my phone, and £22 on drinks at dinner. So that's £1,175 altogether, and when I booked it I did think, God, there are two problems <laughs> potentially with this. One, can I shoot enough to make that money back? And two, how can I do that? Because when I'm at home, a lot of the income I make is from shooting custom videos but they often need specific props and costume and I couldn't travel out to Fuerteventura with a whole load of boxing gloves and PPE and latex catsuits and all the things people ask for. And also I knew that I wasn't going to have lights, I wouldn't be able to take rope with me. There's a lot of stuff that I'd shoot at home that I can't shoot here. So I couldn't take custom videos. So the only way I could make money is from shooting speculative content. So I shoot content for three main places. I shoot longer videos for Clips for Sale and Many Vids, which are two platforms that allow you to sell individual videos to the public. And I shoot for OnlyFans. So that's a platform which is subscription based. So I have a certain number of members who pay a monthly fee and I update them with a minimum of two either videos or selfie sets a day. So I wasn't sure how productive I could be and I wasn't sure how much money I could consequently make. So I didn't really know until this evening, which is the last day of my trip. So I counted up everything I'd shot. So I need, for Clips for Sale and many vids, the same videos go up on both. So I've shot 18 videos during the week, so that's been three a day. And that is enough to update both stores with six new videos a week. So that is three weeks worth of six day a week updates. Then for OnlyFans, which needs shorter videos and selfie sets of about 40 pictures, my challenge to myself was to shoot a week's worth of content every day. 
So in a week I need 14 pieces of new content that don't go up anywhere else. So for six days I shot 14 updates a day, so in the end I'd got 84? 84, yes. So I managed that and that is enough to update my OnlyFans for six weeks. So I worked out how much money I make from three weeks of clips for sale slash many vids videos and six weeks of OnlyFans because that's how much content I've managed to generate. And the number surprised me very much. I'm a bit shocked and embarrassed, but I want to share it because the idea of maybe leaving a sort of roadmap for future models to follow is really appealing. So I spent £1,175 getting here and the income I will have generated will be £9,256, which is three weeks income from Clips for Sale Many Vids and six weeks income from OnlyFans. So my total minus expenses is £8,081, which I find quite staggering. There are a couple of provisos. One, Obviously, what I'm doing is I'm leveraging the fact that I already have a customer base. I'm perfectly well aware that if I was a new model coming out to shoot content, I couldn't guarantee that I'd make anywhere near that much income from it, of course. So how much money you can make very much depends on the size of your customer base. And I am lucky because I've been doing this 19 years, my customer base is large. Another proviso is each of the videos that goes up on Clips for Sale and many vids, each individual video might not necessarily sell that well. They vary massively. My top seller has made me um, £1,500 so far and my lowest sellers haven't sold at all. <laughs> to be fair, most of those are custom videos that were very specific, so I'm not surprised that they haven't sold. But there's a huge range of how much money and any individual video will make. I hope, because I've been shooting my own ideas this week, that they should sell quite well because I based what I shot on what I know does sell well for me. But nevertheless, the reason that my content generates this income is not necessarily that every individual video sells well. It's that by updating six days a week, I keep my name near the top of the rankings so my work remains visible and so when a new video goes live, people do buy it, but they also buy the old things which they are suddenly seeing because they're being presented to the audience because I've updated my store recently. So again, if you don't have a big back catalogue, this won't happen for you. I've got over 1100 videos for sale on those platforms now, so that's part of the reason I'm generating this level of income now. I certainly wasn't. When I started putting videos up on many vids and clips for sale back in 2016, I remember being really happy that it was making me enough money to buy myself like a Starbucks coffee a day because one video would sell or two videos would sell every day and I was really delighted with that. But obviously that has increased massively over time and the reason it's increased is because my library of videos has increased massively so I do need to say that. The other proviso is, and I'm, <laughs> I'm hesitant to say it because I think it sounds a bit inflated, but I've been working long days. When I came out here I thought I might just shoot in the mornings and kind of have a, a break in the afternoons but it turns out I'm not really capable of doing that because I'm quite a restless soul and I feel guilty quite easily so I, I find it very difficult to stop working. So actually I've been starting work at nine and I've often not actually finished work until ten in the evening. That's not all modelling though. I think only probably three or four hours of that day is actually spent modelling. The rest of it has been spent uploading the content, writing the descriptions, <laughs> keywording everything, tweeting about the trip, walking from one location to another. So saying I did a 12 hour working day for six days is not fair. There were breaks within that. There were times when I was walking from one location to another location on the beach to shoot, but the fact was I was still having a nice walk on the beach. It's not like it was a relentless grind. So probably the actual active working part of the day 
was 10 hours because there were breaks when I stopped for a glass of water or I had lunch. Uh, so I think it's probably fair to say I did 10 hour days for five days. So that's like 50 hours. And then today, the last day, I've probably only done seven hours. So altogether it's been about 57 hours this week. So that is a lot and I I'm very well aware that not everyone would want to do that. They wouldn't want to be that relentless. Some people can't be that relentless. Some people aren't in good enough health to work that hard. I'm lucky at the moment I am, and I'm doing something I really love. But I do just need to say that the reason I've been able to generate this much content and therefore this much revenue is because I've worked quite long days. I don't want to kind of sugarcoat the truth. I, I've been in a holiday destination, but I've not been on holiday. So when I compare that, just over £8,000 profit, and I think of how much money I used to make or could make now from modelling for photographers. If I did six days here at my day rate working for photographers, that's £350 a day times six, that would only make me £2,100, which is still bloody good for a week. I mean, <laughs> I would take that and be grateful. But in reality, I couldn't do six days of outdoor art nude work, which is what I'd be doing if I was working with photographers here. Not least because you would tend to shoot dawn and dusk for the nice light. So it would be a very long day with a break in the middle, probably. And I can't do eight hours of modeling a day for six days in a row. It's too tough on my body, especially artistic nude. So in reality, if I'd been out here for a week working with different photographers every day, I wouldn't have actually been able to sustain that pace. I couldn't have done six full days. So I would have had to take a hit on income from that point of view. So I guess I'd be more likely to make more like 1500 pounds from the week, which is more the sort of rate I would charge to one photographer if he brought me somewhere for a week. So the profit margin or the potential profit margin, if you choose to go down this route as well as working with photographers, I mean, it's very exciting. And the other really nice thing, which I need to mention is that it's, been very fun and very interesting to produce my own photographic work. Of course it's not of the technical standard of a good photographer with a good camera. I'm shooting everything on my phone but nevertheless I shot some pictures I'm really proud of and I was able to exercise my creativity in the same way that I would if I was working with a photographer. Now I'm not going to give up working with photographers even though the profit margin is better for me now, generating self-shot work. And the reason is I'd miss photographers, I would miss the collaborative aspect of working with photographers. And I like being a classic photographic model, but what this does, being able to generate this much work and therefore income in a short amount of time, it means that I can be free now for the rest of the year to work with photographers. It's basically given me some wriggle room because I do need to shoot a certain amount of content every week to keep all my stores active, it means that it can be difficult to go on tour and work with photographers, but now I've got really ahead, so I am free to work with some photographers, go on tour, not worry about producing my own content for a few weeks because I've got ahead. So I really recommend this. If you like traveling, if you don't mind being on your own, and if you don't feel too ridiculous, taking selfies where people can see you. I mean, I did feel ridiculous. It feels really narcissistic. I just think I looked like the most narcissistic tourist in the world, like changing into different outfits and doing like 40 poses and then getting changed again. I mean, I don't know what people will have thought. So you have to kind of be a little shameless in that regard but I've had so much fun and has not been by any means a financial disaster and I'm certainly looking forward to doing it again. Now obviously the places that you can do this sort of thing are limited. I wouldn't want to be doing this in a country that didn't have a liberal attitude to nudity. I certainly wouldn't want to be doing it in a country where it would be illegal to do what I've done this week. And there are plenty of countries where I wouldn't feel safe enough as a woman on my own 
doing that kind of thing. So I'm sure it's not like I can just go anywhere in the world and it's not like you should try this anywhere in the world. But I certainly recommend Fuerteventura. It's been an absolute delight. And I think I'll probably come back to the Canary Islands and do something similar. I'm also looking at maybe Formentera because I think that's got a lot of naturist beaches as well. So I really hope that might be useful or inspiring to someone because honestly I've had the time of my life and I love to think of other models doing the same as me. It's really been brilliant. So thank you as always for listening. I'll be back obviously with more. Please pre-order my memoir where I tell the whole story right from the beginning of being a Jehovah's Witness child right through to um, graduating from drama school, discovering modelling completely by chance, and then the wild ride I've been on ever since. It's really been a delight, and I'm looking forward to sharing my story with you. So the link is below in the show notes if you would like to pre-order, because I would love that. Thank you very much, as always, for joining me, and it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.